Hello my friends, welcome to my channel, Lindy's Magpie Reads. And if you're new here, special welcome to you. I'm Lindy, I read a lot, and I also like to make stuff with things that grow in my garden. And it's kind of poignant for me right now because I'm going to be moving away from this place in two and a half weeks from now. So. Uh, with the help of my sister-in-law and my niece, I picked 40 pounds of grapes a couple of days ago. They took half of them and with the other half I made juice. It's hard to get a good photo of what this juice looks like, but the grapes are somewhat like a Concord grape, a type that grows well here in, in the north. Um, Edmonton is latitude 53 north. It is so delicious, a really deep, deep purple. Uh, I'm gonna miss those grapes among many other things. And uh, another thing I did uh, just a few days ago was I dug up an elecampane plant for the root. I use it to make cough syrup. It's really simple. I just slice up the root and macerate it in honey for a few weeks and then strain off the root and then the medicinal quality of the roots is in the honey. Teaspoon for a cough works really well. Last year I tried something different. If you've been watching my channel for a while, I showed a multi-ingredient cough syrup from a herbology book that I've got. It included elecampane root and a whole bunch of other things, and I just didn't like it as well. It tasted okay, but I didn't find it as effective, and it's one that requires brandy. This one has no alcohol. Yeah, and it's so simple. It's great. I'm planning to take some elecampane seeds with me to Victoria. We're going to be living in a house there with a garden and the landlords have said it's fine for me to do what I like in the garden. So that's one of the plants that I'm for sure going to be putting in the ground. So if you've moved house before, you know that you end up unearthing stuff that you haven't seen for a while. And in my case, I've been here in this particular house for 37 years. And I found this little apron that my great aunt Ida made for me in about 1963, when I was three or four years old, 63 or 64. I remember that it used to have bells on the ends of the apron ties. And I cut them off at some point when I was older to use them for some project, but I remember how much I love this little apron. It's going to find a new child now. And my favorite little sweater. I was about four, I think. I remember this was in a box of used children's clothing that my mom got. Uh, at that point, I think there were still just three of us. Uh, three, I had two other siblings at that point. Um, and we were all one year apart in age. Anyway, I pulled this out of the box and <laughs> I wore it until it was so tight on me. And then I wouldn't let my mom throw it away. I just love it so much, but okay. Time for a new child now. Has that ever happened to you where you just have a hard time letting go of clothes that you love? Uh, anyway, I'm getting better at it, much better at it, because the moving company, you pay the, by the pound. So clothes aren't so heavy, but books, oh yes, books are heavy. <laughs> Finding new homes for lots of books. And another thing I came across, so this is more recent, 1995 it must be. Um, I was interviewed on the street. The question that they were asking people, what should Prime Minister Jean Chrétien say about the Quebec separation issue when he visits Edmonton today? So this must have been just prior to the 
uh, Quebec separation referendum in 1995. And I said, Chrétien should take the approach that staying together as a country is the ideal solution. Quebec is still welcoming Canada and he should get that message across to the people in Quebec. All right. Yeah, that was me as a... <laughs> I just seemed like a little kid back then. <sighs> All right, on to the books. I'm going to tell you about seven books that I finished in the past couple of weeks. At my last Friday Reads, I didn't include everything because there was too much. So I'm trying to catch up here today. And I'm going to start with a picture book by Elena Ferrante, the Italian author, the mysterious person. It's called The Beach at Night, a picture book illustrated by Mara Cherry, and it's translated by Anne Goldstein. So The Beach at Night is a toy fantasy told from the viewpoint of a doll that gets left behind at the beach one night and adventures happen. It's a story for all ages, so suitable for kids, but there's lots in there for older readers as well, you know, older, all the way up to adults. And I've been on the waiting list at the library for Shuna's Journey for ages. <laughs> it just seemed like forever for it to come in. This is by the filmmaker Hayao Miyazaki. It's in manga format, where it goes left to right. But the style is more like graphic novel. And it's done in beautiful watercolor. I found out from the translator's note at the end, translated by Alex Dudok DeWitt, that this story is based on a Tibetan folktale. Although when I found out more about the folktale, I realized this is more like, that was a jumping off point, I think, for the cartoonist. Adventure story, Prince goes looking for uh, a grain because his people are starving and many things happen along the way. The text is not in separate balloons. And sometimes it's even a little bit hard to see against a darker background, but a lot of the story is told purely through the images. Occasionally I found that it was hard to follow where you're supposed to go next. Like in this case, I went like this and the text didn't follow and I realized I had to go like this. So, it's occasionally not intuitive where you need to go, but the story is simple enough and satisfying. I was a tiny bit disappointed, actually. Uh, I gave it four stars, which is still really good and a book that I recommend. It reminded me of other works by Miyazaki, like Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind, another all ages book. Next I picked up a book that I heard about from Fraser of Springboard Thoughts. Thank you Fraser, this was a five-star read. Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow, it's written by Tom King and illustrated by the Brazilian illustrator Vilki Evely. It's a combination fantasy, science fiction, superhero story, a girl on another planet whose father is killed, wants, reve wants revenge, and she and Supergirl end up going from planet to planet, tracking down the guy who killed her father, and many adventures along the way. There's a requisite scene of them at a bar where people from across the planet are hanging out. Um, the colors are fantastic, gorgeous, rich reds and purples and oranges. 
Uh, I really, really love Ivalee's art in here. It's all around fantastic. So thank you, Fraser, for mentioning that. Uh, Fraser hasn't been doing a lot of videos on his channel, but he and Shelley Swearingen every month have faithfully been doing their best of the month and the worst of the month. The two of them doing a video together and that is always enjoyable to watch those. So I will link their channels down below. Next up is an audiobook, What's Gotten Into You? The story of your body's atoms from the Big Bang through last night's dinner. And it's by Dan Levitt. Uh, so as the title suggests, this is a science book and I find listening to science very soothing when I'm frazzled with all the stuff I have to get done for the house um, and the whole move thing. It's a bit chaotic around here so science just helps me put everything in perspective and as the title says uh, we're following atoms and how start out as stardust and evolve into life forms on earth which evolves into people and by the end of the book he's talking about how the atoms in the food we eat get absorbed in our body uh, all all part of the universe and I could say coincidentally, although maybe not because I am science oriented, but I'm taking an online course right now. Not the best time to be learning new material, but because it's online and you can go at your own pace, this works for me. It's the science of natural dyes and it's offered through Mewa in Vancouver. The first time that they've offered such a thing and I was so excited when I saw that it was coming up and I am loving it. If you're the kind of person who can geek out about organic chemistry and inorganic chemistry and what molecules look like and how electrons behave then you'll know <laughs> what, uh, what's going on in my mind because I've discovered that I love doing natural dyeing, getting color from plants and the science behind it absolutely fascinates me. And the more I learn about it, the more I love it. So that's another thing that I'm doing these days. Another audiobook that I listened to recently is But You Don't Look Autistic at All. It's by Bianca Toops, a Dutch autistic woman. And it was translated by Faye McCorkadale Smith. And I listened to the audiobook read by Ioni Butler. It's only four hours long. It's a combination of memoirs. So uh, Toops talks about what her life is like as an autistic. And she also presents a lot of uh, factual information. And so it's a good blend. I recommend it if you're interested in learning more about autism or if you have autism, maybe you can recognize some of the stuff uh, that Toops went through in here. And she has helpful tips, both for other autistics as well as for uh, people who have family and friends or maybe colleagues who are uh, autistic. And she writes with uh, a real nice sense of humor. The third audiobook I want to tell you about is George, a Magpie Memoir, and it's by Frida Hughes. She mentions in this memoir that she gets a little tired of people always introducing her as Frida Hughes, daughter of Ted Hughes and Sylvia Plath. But 
she is. <laughs> so I'll tell you that. She's an artist, a poet, and a, uh, she does poetry criticism. She writes about living with a long-term disability and at the time that she rescues a baby magpie uh, after a huge storm, the siblings had died, no idea where the parents were. Her marriage was on the rocks and so all of that is happening as she describes this real fascinating bond that she developed with this magpie that she called George. Way back in March, I talked about another book with a pet magpie in it, one from Australia called Penguin the Magpie. And one of my subscribers, Don Kirstig from New Brunswick, mentioned that Frida Hughes had this forthcoming memoir that was, um, I think it was coming out in June. So anyway, I was really glad to see it um, that at my library in the Libby app and put my name on the waiting list and I thoroughly enjoyed listening to it. It is read by the author. Now last up, okay, the best of the bunch is a book that is long listed for the Scotiabank Giller Prize. It's called The Double Life of Benson Yu and it's by Kevin Chong who is a Vancouver writer. This is uh, meta-fictional. It's about 12-year-old Benson Yu who is living in Chinatown in Vancouver with his grandmother, his popo, because his mother has recently died. And it's the 1990s. Now the adult Benson Yu is like in contemporary times and he's a, a graphic novel writer and he's been struggling with writing a prose piece using a character very much like himself. And he, the two timelines end up crossing. There's the metafictional aspect. So adult Benson talks to younger Benson and things get weird, but it's also uh, a story about heartfelt connections and the theme of traumatic experiences, dealing with very difficult things, how that can reverberate in our lives from our youth into our later years and yeah mental health is definitely uh, a big issue in here there's another character who's spending time in a psychiatric ward oh I thought it was fantastic and it's a page turner well called it a page turner but I felt like I had to take it in doses. So I didn't read it beginning to end. I read other things in between chapters. I'll give you a taste of the style. Benny doesn't know it, but he'll see his aunt tomorrow when she shows up after the worst day ever at school. That Monday afternoon, the final bell rings and he can't wait to get home. He pushes through the outer doors, but stops when he sees Steph. His chest soars. She's here for him and he's too grateful to wonder why. He hopes she takes him out for hot chocolate and cracks a few jokes. Just the thought of her kindness, given everything that happened that day, steams him open like a muscle. And now I'll read you a passage from uh, Benny. He's still 12 years old, but he's in the future now. When he was younger, he daydreamed about life in the 21st century. And even with smartphones and electric cars, 
he found it underwhelming. The difference is more incremental than transformational. He'd expected the future to be neon yellow, but it was beige. And that's the double life of Benson Yu. And that is all I've got for you. So thank you so very much for watching. Uh, you know how much I love to hear from you. So please do say hello in the comments and I will see you again soon. Thanks again. Bye.